Hi everybody, um, my name's Corrine and I run Corrine Thorn Glass Artist and I put a little post on with some Christmas decorations showing you with little foxes and birds and things like that. So um, I did ask if anyone wanted a tutorial so I thought I'd do a little tutorial. Excuse the state of me, it's absolutely tipped it down with rain and I got soaked so I'm a bit of a mess at the moment. Um, so anyway, I wanted to show you what I use to make the little animals. Um, and then you may have also seen an air balloon that I did as well. So um, in exactly the same way, I can show you how I've done that. So um, basically, I'm using a die cut machine and um, fiber paper, um, which is this is just a little scrap of it at the moment because uh, waste not, want not. And um, I've been using this, which is fiber paper. And this one's about a millimeter thick and I got it from warm glass very very fragile especially when it's been cut um, so you have to go careful with it but I'm going to show you what I do to make the little animals and air balloons and things to put within between two layers of glass to create my little decorations. So uh, luckily, very luckily, I have a mum who has loads of little machines and things because she makes greetings cards um, and bits and pieces like that and exploding boxes and I get to play with all of her stuff. So we've got this here which is a snap craft well. Um, I'm guessing there's other makes out there and it's basically a machine that puts pressure um, on what I put between these little plates. So you get three different plastic plates, perspex plates. You put your design through it, put it through the machine and it cuts into it using these little dies. Now they're, I believe they're steel. Um, they, um, people use them for card making. You can get them, I don't know whereabouts, which country you're in, but you can get them from places like the range, um, Hobbycraft, online um you guys out there in america you're lucky enough to have hobby lobby i'm sure they do this because they pretty much seem like they do everything and i want to come visit um so you've got die cuts um i've got a teeny weeny little rabbit the little fox and the little bird so that's what i've been using to actually cut into the fiber paper so it's normally used on card or paper but it works perfectly for what i've been using it for um so what i'm going to do is i'm going to place these on my little bit of scrap um because you don't want to waste anything and you just keep using it as much as you can so these plates do go in a certain order um this one is first so i've been told i've had instructions off the parent so I'm layering down this here. I've got nothing to hold my phone at the moment, so apologies for it being a little bit wobbly. Um, but what I'm going to do is just place this where I can on this piece of paper, fibre paper. What I might do is pop that that way. And then if I push it down a little bit, it helps it stay in place because it cuts into the paper itself a little bit anyway. I'm going to pop on my little fox, a little bird, and you can literally layer this up or put as many things on as you can fit. See, little rabbit, I'll pop him down there. And then the next part is we have these two other boards here. So this one goes next. And then this one, they're labelled, um, but luckily I do have a mother to remind me. And then what we do is we pick those up, they go into the machine. Oh, hold on. Oh. <laughs> uh. Trying to do this one handed is really, really tricky. So, into the machine, there, press the little button and it will take it through. I'm sorry about the movement of the camera. I really need to find my tripod, but I'm pretty sure my son's had it like everything else. Here we go. So this comes out the other end. You don't need to force it through or anything. It will do it all itself if you've got this type of machine. Take off the layers. And then you are left with this. So if I take this up carefully, and there you can see it's cut all of that out. So that's the easy bit. 
The tricky bit is now you've got to use a very thin pointy tool to get your fibre paper out of the little cutter. Come on little fox. There you are. It's like I don't want to, I'm warm, leave me alone. And then I'll use this for other pieces because you can say when you've got tiny weeny little dies you can pretty much use all of them. So they're your little pieces that are cut out and then what I'm going to do is use this fabulous tool. I don't know what it's called. I'm not a card maker or anything. So it's a doobie what's it. Um, it's got a really pointy end. So try not to stab yourself if you're using one of these because that will hurt. And I'm literally going to start. I'm going to take them off of this board actually because this board's a little bit slippery and I just want a little bit. Of... Make sure they're safe. So here we go. So like I said, one handed, tricky. Need something to hold my my phone with but a lot of the time as we know um i'm not very well organized <laughs> let's see if we can prop it up on something here we go look at that look at the can right okay so what i'm going to do is very very carefully and i'll probably mess it up because i messed up a few yesterday and you are literally taking out the pieces that you don't need i do that first because then i can see which bits are still within the die that I need to extremely carefully take out. Now this, like I said, is very, very fragile when it's cut. Um, so chances are you're going to tear a few. Um, that's what I did to say yesterday, tore, tore quite a few. Um, but just go as careful as you possibly can. I did a couple of these um, where I literally tore through this little bit here and I'm still going to use them because I can just kind of when they're on the glass I'll just push them down um, so this is the basic taking these bits out so I'm just going to get on and do that and then I'll show you what I do with it afterwards do -do 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 I don't know why Inspector Gadget came up in my head, but um, if I put music over this at the moment, for some reason it won't allow me to update it to or upload it to YouTube. Um, even if I've got, well, it doesn't matter. It doesn't seem to work. So um, you've got a little taste of Inspector Gadget then. God, I haven't watched that for ages. Anyway, um, back to what I'm doing. Oop, tore it, tore it. Oops. Um, back to what I was doing. So here we go. Now, as you'll see, I have torn it in a couple of places. Um, but as I say, when I put that on the glass surface, I'm going to put it in between the two pieces of glass. I'll just push it down and try and join those, join those back up. So it, it's not the end of the world. And if you're practicing for a bit, it's it's not major. Um, but there's my little aeroplane, and you can see how fragile that is. Um, but He's out in one piece, sort of. <laughs> still one piece, just got a couple of broken bits. So then we've got the little fox. So on the back of here, there's a couple of little holes that you can poke very carefully through, which helps it lift up the piece that you're taking out. So we're just going to take the little fox out now. And the worst bit of the little fox and many of the little creatures is their legs which if the worst comes to worst and you lose a foot, you can hide it behind a little bit of snow. So again, not the end of the world, but there is our itty bitty little fox. So I'm just going to go ahead and do the others and then I will show you what I do to actually place them within the glass and make our little decoration. So I've brought these pieces up to the studio and I've got my little Oh, there it is, my little fox. And I'm gonna do it with a transparent blue background. I don't know what color this is. I've just got a load of transparent glass all cut up into pieces. Um, piece of clear. Now these are just over an inch by an inch. And then I've got a piece of white glass that I've been using for snow on my other decorations. So I'm just gonna use the end of this one for my little fox so um, what I'll be what I do first is I put my blue down put my little fox oh you can't see there we go 
blew down little fox in there because he's quite long but I don't want a massive decoration I've done him on an angle and then what I'll do is work out where I want to cut my piece of snow so I'm just going to go ahead and do that so here's my little bit of snow so I'm going to position my fox oh gosh there we go camera really need to find my tripod position my little fox and then work out where he needs to be in relation to the snow so I'm just going to move him by using the glass and he's going to be about oh not there let's move him down a little bit at an angle pop that on a little bit of snow and pop him in there like that so you've got transparent the little fox then the clear then a little bit of uh, white for the snow now i was given some steel wire so i've just been cutting out little hangers so that will just go in the top there and then he'll go in the kiln um, so this little piece of wire will go in between these two colours but I can't do it one handed so I'm going to do that now and there he is all ready to go into the kiln so with these um, I can I use different um, size kilns here um, so I've got the extra large the large and then teeny weeny ones if I was putting them into the teeny weeny one um, I would do that for about four minutes um, on half power um, and then four minutes on the next level and then probably a minute if it needs it on the high level um, I only have a 700 watt microwave that's all I ever use um, it's going at the moment so we'll see what happens with what's in there um, if I'm doing him in either one of these um, I'd normally do a selection of them and they would go on at probably um, 9 or 10 minutes at 350, 9, 10 minutes at 500 and then about 3 to 4 minutes on max and then I just do little bursts of about 15 to 20 seconds um, until I'm happy that they've, they've come out. Um, so that's what I've been doing. I've got a little fi fo fix. Um, just to prove that things don't always go right for me, um, this little fox has kind of lost his nose because the glass shriveled at the side because it was obviously a bit smaller than it should have been, so he, he doesn't have a nose. But um, that's the sort of way that he will, the other one will come out. You can choose whatever backgrounds you want. Um, these are my little snowflakes that I've been making which I've done in exactly the same way, but I've used a, um, what are they called? Here we are. I've used one of these and I paper punch and I've literally just punched out of the fiber paper so that I've got um, a load of snowflakes. Pop those inside between the two pieces of glass with a little hook and you end up with, oh, journey around the really messy studio and you end up with these lovely little things if you can see them there we go um, and I've also done this one in exactly the same way so um, this is quite a large die cut piece and um, what I've done under my lovely little bit of paper here um, I've got some pieces that are ready to go and you can see oh, really carefully without ruining it here it is and I've just taken the pieces that I want because it wouldn't fit within the glass size I wanted so I've just taken the pieces that I wanted layered it up and then um, lit oh, literally sandwiched it between the glass and then you end up with something like this now this one's about three three inches so with this I use the largest of the kiln um, kilns that I've got and I do again in exactly the same way um, I do nine to ten minutes and I, I build it up slowly so nine to ten minutes at 350 nine to ten minutes at 500 and then full power probably for about three or four minutes and then just increments until I'm happy with where it's got to now you are going to get some bubbles in there because the air can get trapped um, I am looking at other ways to try and reduce that 
um, but uh, I think it's pretty anyway. So there we go, Christmas decorations made using your fibre paper. And I say I get mine from Warm Glass, so I know they don't pay me for saying that, it's just the most local glass place um, that I buy things from. So there we go. Hope you enjoy having a play. Um, ask any questions if you want to and please like and subscribe because um, I do try and do extra videos to show people what I'm making and uh, if you've learned something today then that's fabulous. Thank you, take care, bye bye.